My dudes, what is up? Welcome to my tiny house and welcome to my channel. My name is Stacy. Why, well, yes, I did get my hair cut. Thank you for noticing. Today I'm gonna to be talking about an issue that may or may not relate to a lot of folks who live in tiny houses, RVs, trailers, mobile homes. The biggest difference between a mobile home and a home that's permanently set on a foundation is just that. Definitely tiny homes can be set on a permanent concrete foundation or using something like a helical pier system. That's how I want to start this video, talking about all of the circumstances that in my particular scenario kind of overlapped in this Venn diagram to create the perfect environment for mold to thrive. So I had mold growing underneath my tiny house. I'm going to talk about why I think it happened, how we were able to ultimately fix the problem and prevent it from happening again. So if you're thinking of living in a tiny house, I want you to learn from my mistakes. And if you do live in a tiny house and now you're like, oh my God, do I have mold growing under my house? I would definitely recommend that if you have not already, you crawl under your crawl space, shine a little flashlight underneath the house and make sure that this is not happening to you. But if it is, I'm gonna tell you all about how to fix it. talk about what this land looked like before I got here. It's basically just a patch of grass. The first thing that I had to do was order a truckload of gravel and then just laying it all out. So the park where I am located very specifically does not allow me to pour any concrete or drill anything further than three feet into the ground. So what we ended up doing instead on top of that gravel was laying six patio stones. So one on each corner and then two in like the center. On top of that are pressure treated wood blocks. You could also use cinder blocks. And then my house kind of sits on top of those. That's it. It's very simple. I forgot to mention the most important thing here that will probably set my house apart from your tiny house, which is that my home is not on a trailer. It was delivered on a trailer and then the trailer was slid out from underneath by jacking the house up, putting down those blocks and then setting the house back down. So if I wanna move it in the future, I'm gonna to have to rent a trailer. And then what is the environment that's around you? So I'll say like two meters that away is a river. So the ground has a lot of moisture coming up from underneath. That being said, I probably live in a much drier climate than you might if you live on the west coast, if you live anywhere further south where it's just more humid. Two other things that, actually three things that I had in this house when I initially uh, purchased the home. I had an incinerating toilet that used propane to set my on fire. I no longer have that, but obviously that would you know, create some heat in and around the toilet. I have heated floors, so I have a radiant in-floor heating that's hooked up to my propane boiler. And beneath that, my floor is insulated. So I had a lot of heat coming from the base of the house, so right where the floors are, which for a lot of trailers or other mobile homes, that's gonna be the coldest spot in your house. And getting to the subject that we're talking about here, whether your skirting is insulated or not, ventilated or not, is gonna cause cold drafts of air flowing underneath your house. So a lot of the folks who live in this park where I live, that's their biggest complaint during the winter, the floors are very cold. My washing machine is running right now and it's gonna vibrate the house periodically and I hope it's not too distracting for the audio. I'm really sorry. Basically, what happened? The reason why all of this started was uh, one day my water froze. I do have an insulated and a heat wrapped water line, but there's this little sensor that determines if it's below zero degrees, I'm gonna turn the heat tape on. That sensor was underneath my house. And because it was, I don't know, minus four outside, but it was actually like two degrees underneath my house, the heat tape did not turn on. So I thought maybe something was wrong with 
the water supply. So I called the folks who work at this park. They came and crawled underneath my house. And I remember the guy told me, there's a lot of condensation underneath your house. It is raining on my head. And I thought, hmm, that, that might be problematic. This was in December and I had only moved in in the middle of September. So I hadn't been here for very long. So we had a look under the house and lo and behold, there was mold growing. Now the mold was white. It was not, you know, black or any sort of mold that would be detrimental to my health. By the way, my skirting was done by the builder when they set up my house. That was all done for me. So I didn't really think about it, but it was definitely the perfect environment underneath there. It was warm. There was no ventilation at all. So tip number one that I'm going to tell you guys, ventilation, ventilation, ventilation of your skirting is so important. So I'll show you some clips from my neighbor's house where their skirting is done in panels. And some of the panels are solid and some of the panels are vented. They have tiny little holes that allow the air to move underneath. So my skirting was kind of uh, bespoke. You can say it was custom made. It's just planks of plywood, but underneath or behind the plywood is like some sort of thick foam. I don't think it's styrofoam, but it's like this thick gray foam. And that was a big, big mistake. So what my builder actually did was they came back and they put on the far back end of my house a fan. However, the fan only turns on when it's above seven degrees Celsius. They put that fan in, but it was doing absolutely nothing because it wasn't even warm enough for it to turn on. I knew that I needed to find some other way to ventilate the skirting without ripping all of it off and redoing it. So we started at the end of my house where the bathroom was located. So we cut a big hole, ripped that out and replaced it with a lattice. So this is a wood lattice and now it basically serves as a door. It has a couple of handles. Whenever I want to have a look under the house, I just unscrew the screws that hold that piece together and I can take it off and put it back on when I need to. We ended up almost a year later <laughs> this summer doing the same thing on the other side of the house. This time it's uh, plastic, it's like a painted plastic material, but essentially we had to cut a hole. I would have liked to have done the whole side, but because my septic pipe is on that side of the house, I'm talking about this side, that's right behind me right now. Obviously we didn't wanna have to cut around that because I did not want to accidentally cut into it. So we kind of just stopped just shy of that septic pipe so if you're going to do skirting yourself, I think it should be insulated if you experience really cold winters like we do, especially if your floors are not heated because otherwise you're gonna have the opposite problem where maybe you don't have any mold growth but you have really cold floors and your forced air heating system or maybe your ductless mini split has to work a lot harder to maintain a warm temperature in your house and then your electricity bill is going to be kind of out of control. You have to kind of find the right balance for you. My builder did come back and wash off all of the mold with just a pressure washer and then we prepped the area to make sure that this does not happen again. So we used a primer and a paint that is mildew and mold resistant and then lastly we laid down a plastic sheet on the ground. I will put a link again in the description for you to see what kind of material that we used, but we bought it in a big rolled up sheet. We measured underneath the house, particularly where all the footings were, and then we laid it out in my partner's basement, did all the measurements again, and kind of drew with a marker so that we could pre-cut it, so that when we brought it back to my house, we just rolled it out in one shot. We definitely noticed like the day after we laid down that ground sheet, that we could see condensation and little water droplets coming up from the ground. So unless you have a concrete pad, in which case I just don't think that would be an issue for you. In that case, I would still use the primer and the paint underneath that is mold and mildew resistant. The last product that I'm gonna recommend for you guys, again, it doesn't matter what brand you use, but this has been incredibly valuable and helpful. It is a monitor. So this works both indoor and outdoor to show me what the temperature and the humidity level is underneath my house. That's it guys. It's a short video, straight to the point. 
but I hope you found this helpful. If you know anyone who might find this video valuable, please share it with them. I would greatly appreciate it. If you have any other questions, anything that I didn't explain very well in this video, any nuances that are particular to your situation, just leave them in the comments down below. That's all for now, folks. Take it easy.